Good morning, students. Welcome to our second Sunday School lesson online. I hope that you're all doing very well, and I pray that, that God has really been blessing you throughout this week. Even though there are crazy things going on in the world and really difficult things, God is still with us. And so we're here today to pray together and to have a special lesson. We have a special guest coming to help us today, but first let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you very much for all those who are coming under the hearing of your word today via this lesson on YouTube. I pray your blessing upon these children. I pray your blessing upon their parents and their families. I pray, God, that you pour out your Holy Spirit into their hearts and into their homes. Please help me to teach this lesson, for nothing I do has any power or any value unless you are in it and unless your Holy Spirit empowers me. Please, God, take over this lesson and help me with all my words and help me to teach only the truth. And I pray your blessing upon all those who are hearing in Jesus' name. And Lord, I also wanna lift up all those who are suffering with the virus in particular. We pray that you bring healing, help, and hope to their lives. And we pray, God, that you put an end to this virus once and for all. Please help the healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, first responders, policemen, firemen, all those who are there doing jobs that don't get noticed, like those who are at the pharmacy, those who are in the, the ordinary drugstore, those who are in the supermarket, checkout girls, everybody who's doing jobs, even the Amazon delivery guy, please bless them all, God, and keep them safe and under your care. And now, Lord, we ask you teach this lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. So today's lesson is about how Jesus suffers for us. And our Bible reading is coming from the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 11 through 31. If you need to go and get your Bible, just pause this video, go get your Bible, and you can have it ready. Um, I tell you that our Bible verse today is, Christ suffered for you. He committed no sin. 1 Peter 2, 20 to 23. The little dots here mean that there are other words in between, but this is our focus. So these are the parts of the verses we're looking at today. Christ suffered for you. He committed no sin. And as we go through our lesson today, we're going to be talking about the word unfair and the word appreciate. So let me talk to you a little bit about the word unfair. Um, hey, Chris, by the way, um, while I'm doing this Sunday school lesson, could you come here? I, I really need you to do some chores while I'm teaching the Sunday school lesson. So right. could you um, please here, take this broom and go sweep the floor. And after you sweep, you know, pick up the mess that you made. And then when you're done, take this mop and mop the floor. And then I need you to use these sponges and wash some dishes. Oh, and here, um, use this to take out the trash when you're done. And here's a dish towel to wash all the dishes. <sighs> there you go. What? You what do you mean, what? 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 But this is so unfair. It's what? Unfair. It's not fair to have you do have all do those this? chores I'm no. teaching the Sunday school lesson. Right, I shouldn't have to do all of this. I did chores this morning. You did chores this morning? Yeah. Oh, I guess this is an example of what unfair is like. Well, go do those chores anyway. Bye, Chris. <laughs> well, Chris made a point. He said that doing all those chores by himself would really be unfair. And I think all of us know what unfair means, but Chris and I were just having a little fun and reminding you of what that word means. Another word we're going to go over is appreciate. Oh, and Chris, you forgot your empty plate. Here's your empty plate from those pancakes I made you this morning. Thank you so much for those pancakes. I really appreciate them. You do? Yes. Do you appreciate me as your mom? Yes, I do. You know, I bet all the students really appreciate their parents. Well, at least they will when I remind them to. Um, you should appreciate your parents and your teachers. <laughs> and Ronnie. And your, and your, um, the food that you have in your house and the warm bed you slept in last night. There are many people that don't have those things. So even with the virus going outside in the world and here, there, and everywhere, we always have much to thank God for. And so that's that word, appreciate, um, showing me that. So Chris, thanks. I really appreciate your help today. And so we're going to talk about these words in the con context of our Bible story today. So hopefully... You have your Bible out and you're ready to go. We're going to start our lesson. And Chris, we're going to switch the storyboard so we have some pictures for our students to look at. And Chris is going to move the camera just a bit. Please bear with us. We are not technical people, but we are God people. And so we are here to focus on the Lord. Let me get my glasses. Pardon me, guys. So we're reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 27. We're starting in verse 11. Again, if you need time to find that in your Bible, just hit pause on the video. 
Chris is going to pan on some pictures that go along with our lesson today. Last week, we talked about how Jesus was arrested. Remember, he was in the garden, he was praying, and he was so upset because he knew he was soon to die. But he was praying for God's will to be done, not his own. And while he was praying, his disciples kept falling asleep. And then eventually, when the soldiers came and arrested him, his disciples ran away and they left him. And Judas, his other disciple, he betrayed him. And we talked about how that difficult that was. Today's story continues where last week's story left off. Here we continue with Jesus being arrested. The Roman soldiers are with him. And we'll continue our story from there. Matthew 27, verse 11. Sorry, guys. I forgot to turn back one page. Okay. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. You see, most people would defend themselves, but Jesus did not, because it was for this purpose that he came to earth in the first place. Now, it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy or jealousy that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. And so Pilate had this warning that he should have nothing to do with Jesus' death. However, he gave in to the pressure he was getting from the crowds of people. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Ready? Barabbas, Barabbas they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who was called the Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify, Crucify him. him. Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! While Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, Let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Flogged means that Jesus was beaten. He was tortured in a sense with a type of whip they used back then. It had sharp spikes sticking off of it, um, pieces of bone and iron. And, and when the two people um, inflicting this on Jesus would take turns whipping his back, and the flesh on his back would be torn. And it was so painful and um, so terrible. But Jesus endured this, even though he could have stopped it. He could have been rescued from this. He endured this because he loves you and me so much. Let's continue and find out what else happens. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus to the Praetorium, which is the palace of the Roman governor. And they gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, the king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Next week, we'll talk about Jesus' crucifixion. But I want you to think for a moment about what Jesus endured. He was whipped. He was mocked. He was spit on. He had a crown of thorns 
pressed into his head. He was hit over and over again. He endured all of these things because he loves you and I so very much. In here, we have a coloring book. Sorry, I have to reach for it. And this really has a good picture to show us why he did that. Here, the picture represents us. We're separated from God by our sin. Not even one sin is allowed in heaven. God hates sin, but he loves us. And so he knew he had to make a way for us to get to him and to be able to spend eternity with him in heaven. And that way is Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he took all of our sins on himself. He took the punishment that we really deserved. And because of him, we are able to be here with God. And one day we will be in heaven with God. We will. Here in the coloring book, there's a little picture. And here's us on this side with God. So we need to remember that all the suffering that Jesus went through, he did willingly. He did not deserve it. It was unfair, as we talked about. It was unfair, just the way it was unfair for me to give Chris all those chores in one, at one time. Uh, but it was so unfair. He didn't deserve any of that. Jesus was perfect and sinless. But he took all of that punishment, all of that. He endured all that suffering for you and for me. And so I want you to remember that this week, even though you might be going about, oh, playing video games or watching TV or playing with your brothers or sisters or whatever you might be doing, hopefully helping with chores, uh, hopefully doing some schoolwork, but whatever you're doing, I want you to stop and I want you to think about what Jesus did. No suffering we endure on this earth could ever compare to what he did, and he did it willingly. He did it all on his own. So remember, Christ suffered for you. He committed no sin. 1 Peter 2, 20 to 23. As we close out our time together, as we close out our time together, I just want to thank you for joining today, and I want to encourage you to join in again next week. Please text me or message me if you have any prayer requests in the meantime or any questions. Remember, God loves you, and so do I.